Good morning. My name is Alex Dean. I'm the Deputy Head at Bingley Grammar School. Um, we're in the local authority of Bradford in West Yorkshire. Bingley Grammar School, despite its name, we are truly a comprehensive school. People sometimes get the wrong idea. When I moved to Bingley Grammar School from a, a different school within the area, people are like, ooh, Bingley Grammar School, ooh, blazers and what have you. Actually, we are truly a comprehensive school. We have an ethnically diverse population. We've got students who bring different experiences, faiths, beliefs to our school community. And we found this programme is very accommodating of that. Our students also come from a wide range of socioeconomic backgrounds. Whilst our school is in um, quite a leafy suburban area, our intake actually comes from all over the city of Bradford and from Keithley. So we are a really diverse school community. Uh, this is not a programme which needs to be in a really kind of leafy, engaged school. This is a really good programme for a normal, comprehensive school, which we are. Um, for, this reason, for these reasons, the experiences and skills that our students have gained through the Young Leaders Award programme, it has really offered them an enrichment that I would argue is second to none. In education, when you've been in it for a while, like I have, um, various buzzwords do the round and we have a new framework, I'm not going to say the O word, but we have a new framework, lots of new words kind of buzzing around there. Um, I'd argue this programme does move us away from a tokenistic buzzword bingo and actually offers students real meaningful experiences. Um, I'm going to play a little bit of buzzword bingo with you, phrases such as broader development, development their character, equipping students to responsible, respectful, active citizens, celebrating what we have in common. These are all things which are kind of currently out there in terms of educational judgments that are being made. Actually, I would argue those words actually mean something with the participation in this programme. Uh, they kind of become real life concepts, things actually happening rather than vague philosophical statements. And this programme has offered that. Okay, so my name is um, Sajila Shah and I teach Religious Studies at Bingley Grammar School. I came to this as conference uh, four or five years ago and the reason why I came to the conference was because um, enrichment is a huge passion of mine and it always has been. My own experiences at school with enrichment um, have stayed with me to this day and as a teacher I really see the impact that enrichment has. To see what this, this award um, does for students, the opportunities that it gives them, I just think that uh, it's something that all schools um, should implement in their curriculum. Right now I run the award as an after school club. So I've been running the award, um, I think it's on a Wednesday, it has been on a Wednesday for the last four years. So I take an hour out of my um, schedule after school and I have launched the award through assemblies and I have um, asked students in year seven to start with who would like to um, be part of this award. So I'm just going to explain to you um, how I run the award after school, the opportunities that students have had and the experiences that have really impacted their skills. So for me, it's about the life skills that students get from this award, such as teamwork, leadership, but also the values and the virtues, just becoming good people. You know, in the current education system, I think that sometimes we, we lose some students in the system who might not be academic, who might not feel that their voice is being heard. And this award is really an opportunity for them to have that. I also want to say that um, Sometimes when people hear the name of the award, they assume you have to be a person of faith to be engaged. I have students of different faiths, of no faith, who come to um, be part of the award, who are from different backgrounds, and that's really important um, for me to say as well. I just want to speak about the way in which the award is run. So there are three strands. First of all, the first strand of um, faith where students learn about inspirational people, the resources are outstanding. So when I looked at the resources, I knew that somebody in education had put them together. So if you are running the award as part of the curriculum, it would really work. So although I run the award after school, it's something that I would like to be embedded in the school curriculum. The first strand, which is 
faith, students learn about inspirational leaders from the past and the present. So, you know, Martin Luther King, um, they've looked at people in the present, Bethany Hamilton, people of faith who have really made a difference in the world. And again, the resources are just very structured. They are tailored for different learners. They are differentiated. So they can be taught as lessons. And that's definitely a reason why I would like to sort of speak to my leadership team to see if we can embed this in the curriculum so that um, teachers, not just in humanities, but teachers of different subject areas, form tutors, for example, could deliver it. If you have, in our school, we have BGS time, which is 50 minutes every, <coughs> excuse me, every two weeks. Um, so it could be something that teachers who are non-specialists uh, could deliver as well because if you're embedding this award in your curriculum you may have teachers of different subject areas delivering it too. So the second strand is hope where students learn some of the skills which will be needed to help them to um, put together their action projects. So they look at team building, they look at leadership skills and then they decide what they are going to do. So here we have Eric Hirsch, who some of you might have seen on the, uh, the Windermere Children. He is a survivor of Auschwitz and a very close friend of Bingley Grammar School. He absolutely loves this award. He speaks to students in schools with his wife about tolerance and respect, about, you know, teaching kindness, about making positive changes. So the students presented him with a plate here, with um, you know, a tree of hope, and spoke to him about the projects that they were involved with. The students are going to speak to you, um, who are here today, about their experiences meeting Eric. Some other examples of projects that students um, have um, been part of, so Eric and Jean are here with the students, are visiting local care homes. So I have established links with a care home, literally just a 10 minute walk from my school. And students have gone at Christmas, they have decided what they're going to do. So when I ask the students what they want to do, they come up with an action plan, they tell me what they would like to do and I help to facilitate that, but they are the ones making the decisions. So I will sort of sit in my classroom and allow them to have the opportunity. Um, obviously there is structure, you know, I'll give them time frames, I'll say, right, I would like you to now decide, um, you know, when we go to the care home, what are we going to do? Are we going to talk to the residents? As you can see, um, they decided, um, that they were going to put Christmas hats on, they were going to sing Christmas carols, they were going to take gifts in. And we also spoke about speaking to elderly residents. We have a tea party every year. We have students who um, do bingo, um, students who say, Miss, I don't know how to make a cup of tea, so I'm going to learn how to make a cup of tea to give to the residents. Some students, when you saw the video of the pottery painting, they came to me and said, Miss, this... Uh, the elderly lady, she, she doesn't want to paint, I don't know what to say. And so I was teaching them skills in speaking to elderly people and, and people who might find it difficult to have a conversation. Students also have to decide what they're going to do in their school community. So we have had um, bake sales, we have had litter picks. I was very impressed with the recent bake sale for um, Bradford Royal Infirmary because the students just planned the whole event themselves. These cupcakes, Miss Shah, are going to be 75p because they're really big. They had a float. They planned it all so well. They decided who was going to do what. And when I arrived, there were some students just hanging around not buying anything and they'd say excuse me if you don't want to buy anything can you please leave because we're trying to sell we're trying to sell these cakes to make some money and they were very polite and they were all working as a team together when Eric and Jean came in on Wednesday I was so impressed at the confidence and the kindness that they showed to Eric and Jean and to see them develop um, over the last few months has been wonderful. For me, a big part of why I think the Young Leaders Award is a success is, number one, I think the resources are very clear. I think that they are um, very engaging for students. I also am very lucky that I have a fantastic leadership, te leadership team. I literally say to the leadership team, I would like to do this, and they trust me, and they support me with everything that I want to do with the award. 
also I have fantastic students who are so inspirational, which leads me on to um, some of the points that the Archbishop of York said. They really do want to make a difference, and I'm so inspired by them. They come in on a Wednesday, they have so many ideas, and they work tirelessly to make a difference. And I've seen just how confident they are. Students who don't want to speak in an assembly, who then get up and they they speak and afterwards, Miss, I spoke in front of all of these students. Students who will say, Miss, I had an elderly lady say that I've made her day. These are things that you just can't measure through a grade. These are moments that people will keep forever. When Maybell spoke, and she's going to read the speech that she read to Eric, we were in tears to speak to a Holocaust survivor who has been through so much with such confidence, because I know we, we all were quite we you know nervous to make sure the event went well they were just outstanding and they are making a huge difference when there is a tea party they literally are going around asking um, the elderly residents how they are having conversations we went to a care home for remembrance day they just work so hard and what's really nice is it's what they want to do in terms of running this as an award the first thing I would do is speak to your leadership team about how you would like to run the award to find out what support you are going to get, how many people are going to be running the award with you. At the moment, I'm running it on my own, but I would like to, in the future, have a team of teachers um, embedded into the curriculum. And then, moving forward, in terms of the action, some teachers do worry, how am I going to organise a big event? Again, look and see who is in your local community. I've also found that other organisations are very supportive of this award. So the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust have worked with me when Eric has come in to work with the young leaders. The students have taken part in Readathon who provide resources. Send My Friend to School is another organisation um, who campaign for education for children around the world and they send resources too. So alongside the award, you can use other organisations for students to carry out the different strands. So, I'll just finish off by saying um, I absolutely love running this award. The students make the award a success. I just facilitate and they really are the change that we want to see and it's a wonderful opportunity for them to have their voices heard, to do what they care about. Hello, my name is Mabel and I'm going to tell you about an exciting experience Beanley Grammar School had only on on the 3rd of March we had a visit from Eric Hirsch who is a Holocaust survivor and who was in Auschwitz for a period of time. He came to our school to educate us on why we need to stand up for what we believe in and why we should not judge people for, for who they are and what they believe in. I am now going to read you the speech we presented Eric with when he visited our school. First of all, we would like to welcome you to Bindi Grammar School. We are most grateful that you had the time to come and visit our school. We know your time is precious and we appreciate that you have come out of your way so that you can come and inspire us more. Your story is so inspiring. Although you have struggled, you do not give up on your torch is still shining brightly. We, understand, we now understand how genocides affect the world and we should stand together to stop any more from happening. The Archbishop of York will have been working in the community. This includes our two visits to Thompson Court where we have interacted with the residents and shared stories. We have also raised money for BRI. Luckily we managed to raise over £100. Our motto is be the change you want to see and we have done various things to follow this motto. Finally we would like to thank you again for taking the time out of your schedule to come and visit us. We feel his visit has made us realise more how cruel life can be. Sometimes we have to give more than we can take. I am proud to be part of the award, part of the Archbishop of Wat Young Leaders Award. I'm Safia. And I'm Daniel. We would like to tell you about Readathon we have do been doing recently. Firstly, Readathon is a sponsored read where you read to raise money for children in a hospital, to have books and storytellers to come in. Life in hospital can be boring and this would brighten their day. It also gets everyone reading and you never know, you might discover something you love. So what can you do for reading with Readathon? Well, some people don't like books and so they could read song lyrics, magazines, comics, anything can count. And the money doesn't have to be a lot, it can just 
it can just be a couple of pounds. So how did we all find it? Well, some people read a lot of books, some only a few, but it was worth it. It feels good to know that we've helped a child. I found it challenging because I'm not a reader, so I just read stuff like I like, like magazines. Personally, I love reading, so I really liked it. This is also my first sponsored read, so it was a big thing for me. But some people didn't like reading and found it hard to read a book. But despite that, they never gave up. But this isn't the only thing we've been doing. Yes, we've been to Thompson Court Care Home, where we chatted with the residents and shared stories. And we met Eric, the Holocaust survivor, and heard his story. It was very emotional and gave us an idea of what people actually went through in this terrible time. Some of us also gave him gifts, and there was a competition to make a Holocaust Memorial Day gift. The prize was having lunch with Eric. At the beginning of the club, we learnt about lots of inspirational people from the past and the present. Yes, like Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King and Bethany Hamilton, just to name a few. I enjoy it because I'm learning about different people and different aspects of life. Yes, I have enjoyed this group a lot. It gave me opportunities that I wouldn't have had before. My first ever sponsored read and bake sale was with this group and I don't regret joining it. I have discovered I like helping people out in charities and other people as well. Hi everyone, I'm Jesse and I'm Maya and today we're talking to you about the Thompson Court care home visits. In the Archbishop of York group, it's all about helping others and changing the community for the better. It has helped us learn equality, teamwork and helped us build our confidence. So far we have been on two trips to Thompson Court care home. Our first visit was in November on Remembrance Day and our second visit was in December around Christmas time. The first time we went we were all a bit nervous but Michelle made us feel better. We were taken into a room with all the residents and were told a bit about them and Remembrance Day there at the care home. After this, we were invited to talk to the residents. Me and Jessie went around together and talked to a lot of people and found some interesting stories. One was about a lady and her red nail polish. The second time we went was around Christmas. This time we knew that it would make all the elderly people happy, so we were all excited about it. So we went in and talked to some of the residents about Christmas and we put, all put on Santa hats. Then we sung some carols for them. Our visits have de helped us develop our communication and listening skills. We have had an amazing time and have become more aware. Lastly, we can't wait to go back for the tea party in June. I, at this party, I, all met, I also met um, representatives of the local MP's office and um, had a chat with them and they offered me to go and have some experience at their office for like um, basically an apprenticeship and um, I got familiar with them. I had debates, studied the news, went canvassing and got familiar with issues within the local community. Given my interest in politics and my wish to develop my organisational skills, I organised a trip to the Houses of Parliament, which involved setting up an application and interview process um, for people to go on a trip. There we met Jennifer Crook, who is the Head of Diversity and Inclusion in the House of Commons, and we also had a fascinating guide of the Houses of Parliament. Um, the aim was to inspire people, whether that was about politics, the parliamentary process, architecture, art, or the history of the building. We also took part in the semi friends School campaign, which aims at unlocking education for the 264 million children who don't have it. It also aims at incorporating a uh, climate-sustainable future for the world, so people in third world countries are less worried about base communities like water, housing, education, and can focus on more significant future global impacts, such as the impending climate emergency. This also involved a meeting with the local MP to talk about our achievements and uh, showing him the creative work that we made to highlight the issues around around and what people face every single day just to get an education. After all of this, I now feel significantly more confident and feel much better equipped to organise and inspire others in school to join in with campaigns and initiatives in school and the local community. This has also allowed me to become a campaign champion for Send My Friend to School, which involves a two-day training course and an action day in the House of Parliament to spread the word. To conclude, I would like to thank my uh, Eric Hirsch and my local MP 
for, and my peers for all their time and effort. I would also like to thank the Archbishop of York for this truly amazing opportunity that has really excelled the development of my leadership skills. However, most of all, I would like to thank um, my tremendous teacher, Miss Shah, who for, um, for all her time, effort and uh, blood, sweat and tears that has gone into her <laughs> extracurricular activities. <laughs>